Our next factor is the force derived from the bow. And you can think of that just like the fuel in your car. You know, the force of your bow is what makes things go. Fuel in your car makes things go. If you've got 20 gallons of fuel, how far you can go in that is going to depend on the vehicle you drive. More efficient the vehicle, further you can drive. Same thing works for the arrow. More efficient your arrow, the further it's going to be able to go, the more work it's going to be able to do with whatever force your bow can give it. Now, you can get a very modest gain in bow force with the higher mass arrows because they absorb a little more energy from the limbs. But any sub uh, substantial gain in bow force is going to require that you go to a more efficient bow or a heavier poundage bow. But what we found is that increasing the draw weight of the bow, if you, don't, if you ignore the design factors you error, the amount of performance gain you get is very, very slight. It's not anywhere in proportion to the percentage of bow weight you have increased. So you, as far as reaping returns in penetration, you're much better to concentrate on the design of the arrow than you are to worry about going up to a heavier draw weight bow. It's interesting, um, Byron Ferguson commented as well that anything above 70 pounds of draw weight is a, a rapidly decreasing rate of return in the velocity of the arrow as well. Yeah, it, yeah. it would be the same type of thing. It is, a, in that sense, a diminishing return. You're not getting the benefit return in penetration that you should get. Any poor performing error is going to squander a lot of that force. And so that's, uh, that's where you really want it. That's where you can really capitalize and make some gains. 